Hello, hello, and by special request, I am finally gonna give you guys a full-blown tour of my budget binder, what I use to stay organized, to stay sane. It is probably one of my favorite things to bust out this budget binder every single month and work on our budget and track our spending, and I just love it so much. <laughs> so here we go. To fit everything that I need into my budget binder, I mean, everyone is different. I use a, and I still need to take out the sticker, but I use a three inch binder. And then I, this is kind of something I've always said to myself throughout our debt-free journey, and it's choosing a better life over a big lifestyle is one of the most freeing decisions that you can make. Basically, not keeping up with the Joneses, just living a better life, living a good life, and not focusing on the material stuff is the most important thing during this whole debt-free journey. So that's just something that I kind of have thought and came up with just a personal quote that I like that I have chosen to put on my budget binder. And maybe one of these days I'll, you know, use the color on my printer or something and make it flashier, or more beautiful. But it's true though. It's choosing a better life over big lifestyle and just focusing on that. Um, it is, it's very freeing. And the second that I started putting more emphasis on keeping my four walls happy and not worrying about comparing my life to other people's, I instantly became happier and more content. I think it's just a really good message and budgeting allows you to do that. It's pretty incredible how once you start budgeting your money and prioritizing what's important to you, you're not really worried about what other people are buying with their money. That is the quote that I have to just kind of, the first thing I look at when I, when I open my budget binder and start budgeting for the month. Here we go. All right, so once you open it up, you just see lots of pens. I love pens. Look at all the pretty colors. Play and anyway. And then this I have left over from college, this little zipper pack. And then I have pens, more, pen, more pens, more highlighters. That's kind of what I have going on in this little puppy. It's like, it's like I'm in high school again, it's awesome. Next, you flip that over. And I have everything that is going on in this budget binder. So I have, first thing is our annual and biannual bill tracker. Next is the current month's budget spending tracker. I have these things I use the most. So obviously I want them at the start of the binder so I don't have to rifle through. Um, next is debt-free charts. Next is savings goals. Then our debt attack plan, which has changed a lot. I need to update that then our 2020 starting debts. And then I keep all of the budgets from the previous year. Um, they're just a good reminder of things that I may forget in the fall, like especially with like June, July, August, there's a lot of like summer expenses to deal with the yard, for instance, or car registrations, things like that. That's why I keep the previous year's budget. This is what the table of contents kind of looks like. We have all of that and then in the very last part is any bills, invoice statements that I kind of have to wait on. You know when you get those medical bills but you haven't gotten the insurance statements to verify what they're paying or making sure they're charging you the right amount. And then lastly is our retirement statements, retirement balances, all of that. This is what the table of contents looks like, yay. We'll flip to our first section which is the annual and biannual bill tracker. All right, let me take it out of the sleeve here so you guys can get a better, not shiny view of it. This has been awesome because there's so many things that pop up throughout the year that you kind of forget about and you forget what the amount was. And again, I do keep the previous year's budgets, but I mean, this is just nice to have on hand, especially when I'm creating that budget each month. These are the January bills that come out each year. February is our taxes. We do go to a tax lady. May, we just canceled our P.O. box. I don't need it as of this time, and it just jumped up to $57 twice a year, which is a lot of money. Our sprinklers, um, June is GoDaddy. July is um, Phil's charger registration. Then we do have a website for me that I never use, but we like to keep the domain name. 204, September is our Amazon Prime, and then Jeep registration. November and December, not much. It's Christmas, obviously, holidays, but since I canceled the P.O. box, nothing much going on there. Those are our annual and biannual bills. This is the first thing that I look at, though, when I create the budget, just to make sure there are, there are or there are not any annual or biannual bills that need to be incorporated into the monthly budget. 
we flip to the current month that we are in, our June 2020 budget, which is right here. My budget worksheet and budget categories. And this I just created. I did my first set of budgets with just a yellow legal pad and a pen. And then I kind of organized it this way and I've just kept it this way probably for the last two years. Then I have the spending tracker that follows the budget, which I put down when I spent money, the amount, the place, and the category. And this helps me, especially with groceries, it helps me really see, since we do keep our grocery budget in the checking account, it really keeps me accountable on, usually our grocery budget's anywhere from $450 to $500 a month. And then I can kind of highlight where our groceries are at and I know kind of where we're sitting at for that 500 each month. Then after that is our debt-free charts. This is my favorite part about the entire budget binder. I love it so much. So these all I got for free on debtfreecharts.com. She's amazing, the lady that does that website and creates all of these great charts. She's fantastic. She doesn't know I exist, but I really do appreciate all of the work that she does, especially for those of us in the debt-free community that are trying to <sighs> crawl our way out of debt. I have one of these debt-free charts printed out and I'm also filling them out for every debt that we have remaining. First, for our medical bills, we paid that off back in February before all of this craziness started with the world. <laughs> so this was for Phil's back surgery last year, so we paid that off. Dumb stuff, there was no appliance chart so I just used the one that said dumb stuff which is for our fridge and our washer and dryer and our microwave that went out all within a few months of each other. <sighs> trucking along, we're trucking along on this. We it is a 0% interest loan until October 1st and you better believe we will be paying that off, yes. Um, next up is my car, so so close, so so close to paying that off. We're in the 30, $300 range right now. So hopefully we'll be paying that off around the same time we will be paying off our appliances. So that'll free up a ton of money in our budget. Next, we have our smaller line of credit. It's a revolving line of credit we have through our credit union. Um, yeah, I'm not proud to say we have about $3,900 on it right now. A lot of it we took out because panic shopping, panic buying. We really uh, stockpiled a bunch of stuff not toilet paper, ironically enough, but um, we filled up our freezer and our fridge and our pantry with food because we didn't know what was going on. So a lot of this debt comes from that, but we're at about $3,900 on that leftover. So we're really, our goal in 2020 is to pay this off, pay off my car and pay off our appliances. If we get these three small debts knocked out by December 31st, I'll be so happy. And next we have Phil's car, which we're not even gonna tackle that bad boy until we have the first three debts paid off, obviously. We're sitting at about, yeah, 14.4 there. And our last loan, which is our monster one, is our HELOC, which started off at over 33,000 at the beginning of the year. And as you guys can see, <laughs> it's like every two months I can, I can color a line. We hope to have this last debt paid off by September of 2022. That is our tentative debt-free date. And that is that section of the budget binder. Love it, love it. Next up, our savings goals and our savings tracker. So as you guys can see, we have four savings goals for 2020. All of these are in separate savings accounts through our credit union. So all of that money is in the bank. Next section is our debt attack plan. I'm not even gonna go over this with you guys because everything has so drastically changed with us. We used to wanna pay off our mortgage early. We have decided not to do that. Um, if this was our forever home, we probably would. We're gonna stay here for probably the next four or five years and then after that we are going to find or build our forever home. So right now we are considering ourselves debt free once this bad boy is paid off and the four other smaller loans are paid off. Next up is our starting debts. And then I need all of these other kind of starting debts and debt payment trackers. I don't know. I might like, there's our medical debt right there and I show when we paid it off, which is awesome. But I don't know, I, I might just chuck these. That's the thing with the budget binder. It is an ever evolving like document. I haven't even 
updated this in a while. So, but anyway, you can at least see the starting amounts of our debt in January. There's our big old HELOC there. There's our mortgage. Yay. Then you get into all of these are our previous month's budgets. So I won't even go over that. It's the same thing, except it's all of our budget worksheets filled out. It's all of the trackers filled out. Even though we do share our real budget numbers, we do not share Phil's income. We just don't. He's not comfortable with it. I'm not comfortable with it. So anyway, so that's what all of these sheets are for. They're divided up by month from the previous year. 19 would be any bills, invoices that are pending that we're kind of waiting on. There's nothing there. Everything has cleared. And then 20, and again, I can't show you guys this, but it's all of our retirement stuff. So retirement balances and all that good stuff. And then we have just a ton of extra tabs and extra sheet protectors. These things are awesome, by the way. That was the tour of what is in my budget binder. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Please hit that like button for me and subscribe. It would mean the world to me. Uh, it helps just encourage me and gives me a pat on the back that people are actually watching my budget videos. I would appreciate it so, so much. And if you guys have any requests for videos, let me know. This was a request that I got and I'm like, absolutely, I will give you guys a tour of what's in my budget binder, a full show up. So let me know, let me know if there's anything, if you guys have budget binders, if there's anything that you guys have that you think, hey, she might be able to benefit from that. Come on now. Let me also know in the comments below. Thank you so much. Again, like, subscribe, and I hope to see you next time. Bye.